Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Convertible bond, pure bond value versus market price problem number one. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab, in essence, being an answer key. The information on the left-hand side, populating that into the blue area on the right-hand side, considering our convertible bonds, bonds in which they can be converted into some portion or amount of common stock. So the information on the left says, we have the convertible bonds outstanding market price, the bonds themselves, in other words, selling for the 1,300, the par value 1,000, the coupon rate being the 15%, they're gonna mature in 19 years. Conversion ratio, what they can convert to in terms of the number of shares, in other words, bonds meaning converted into number of shares, 31. The stock market price, meaning the price of the shares that these bonds can be converted into, is currently selling for $40. They're semi-annual interest bonds when we calculate the interest payments on them. And we're going to be taking a look at if similar bonds that are not convertible are yielding 12%, what is the pure bond value of the convertible bond? One of the things we will take a look at. Notice, of course, one of the things that is beneficial of a market, we can look at the market, we can look at similar bonds to determine what we believe the price of a current bond should be and so on. The convertible feature, of course, adds a wrinkle to that, adds a bit of complexity to the type of security. So then the question then is going to be, well, how do I value these things? We can kind of look at similar bonds. We can look at the conversion value as we saw in the past and try to figure out what the value of that conversion kind of feature is or the option or flexibility to be open up to that upside of the of the price going up to be able to convert versus um, in the, the bond, you know, the bond just valuation in and of itself. So let's take a look at it. We're going to take a look first at the conversion value. Conversion value taking the conversion ratio, the number of shares that we can convert this thing into. So in other words, if we bought this bond and then simply at this point in time converted it, we can convert it into 31 shares. The stock price currently being at this point in time, the $40, $40 on the stock price. So the conversion value, if we were just to buy and convert here, conversion value is going to be equal to the 31 times the 40 or the 1,240. Let's put an underline here, font group and underline. Now, of course, that amount is less than the market price is what you kind of expect oftentimes, given the fact that you have the conversion feature that could happen in the future. So you have that upside potential to be able to exercise in the future if the market price goes up. Then we have the, we could calculate and look at the bond side of things as well. Now, again, we might not have other bonds that have the same kind of conversion feature. So it's, it's not as easy to look at the market because there's not as many securities that are the same in principle as this, as this security, right? So there's, there's differences in the variance. So what we can do is look at a bond and say, what if it didn't have the conversion feature, but it was similar in, other, in all other respects, then what would be the price? And then we can try to figure out the value then, or the value that's being placed on at least the conversion, the conversion option. So we might say, okay, to do that, the normal kind of calculation of the bond consists of the present value of the interest payments and the present value of the face amount to give us the pure value of the bond, which we would expect to be the price of the bond in the event that it was like a normal bond without another conversion. So we're going to say that the market price for similar bonds is that 12%. Let's calculate basically what the bond price would be if it was a similar type of bond. Then we're going to say, and note, this is a calculation we did many times when focused in on just simply the bond valuation section. So if you want more practice going on that, or you want practice on present value calculations, we have a whole section on that. You could take a look at that as well. So we'll do this fairly quickly here. Note that they are semi-annual, so we have to take that into case too. So I'm going to say negative present value, shift nine. We're going to take the present value of the rate, which we're going to take the market rate is the 12% on the similar bonds. I'm going to divide that by two because they are semi-annual. So we need the, we need the six month or half a year rate comma the number of periods is going to be then the 19 is the maturity date but that's per year once again it's semi-annual so we need twice that many so times two comma and then we got the payment which would be the par value 1000 times the coupon rate 15 percent but that would be the annual we want the semi-annual or half a year so we're going to take that and divide it by two 
So there we have the portion that would be related to the interest payments for the valuation. Now we're going to take the present value of the principal, the 1000 at the end of the term of the bond. Negative present value shift 9. We got the rate down here once again, picking up the rate at the 12%. That's for a year. So we're going to take that and divide it by 2, comma. Number of periods would be the 19. But then we're going to take that times 2 because it's semi-annual, comma and th then comma and then there's no payment because this is a future we're going to pick just the future value because this is not an annuity but a present value of one calculation so we're simply going to pick up that 1000 at the end of the term of the 19 years so there we have the 109 let's go ahead and sum that up summing that up we get to the 1223 if we add a couple pennies on it to be a little bit more precise we're in the number group adding a couple pennies the 1222.69. So that's what we would kind of expect the bond to be if there was no kind of conversion option on it. So let's calculate our conversion uh, premium. The conversion premium is going to be the bond price, which we're currently selling for. Let's say bond market price, market price, which we're picking up up here at the 1300 and we're going to then compare that to the conversion value, which we calculated up top at the 1,240. That's the value of the stocks that we would have if we were to simply buy the bonds and convert them. So if I underline that here, go to the font group and underline, that's going to give us our conversion value, our conversion premium. Shin premium. So the 1,300 minus the 1,240. So if we were to just buy and convert we'd be down that sixty dollars because of course that would be one way to kind of value uh, the, the option that we have to basically do the conversion we're valuing it basically from the stock side if we were to convert them what would be the value of the stock compared to the market price we can also of course compare the pure bond value that we can try to compare based on similar bonds to the market price so we could then say okay well, let's look at it from this side taking the bond market price which we're saying let's pick the same one up here that's going to be the 1300 compared to the pure bond value meaning the value of similar bonds let's go ahead and underline this one while i'm at it font group and underline it so that means that the market price of the current bond that has the option minus the pure bond value is above uh, by the 77 let's add some pennies here numbers add a couple decimals that's going to be our difference i'll just call it diff difference that we have there so again there's a couple angles that we're trying to get at to see what basically the valuation of of the bond would be now that we have kind of these two components on it we can kind of take a look at that from the stock price side of things if we were to convert it or we can try to take a look at it valuing what the bond would be without the conversion based on similar bonds and then think about the difference there to try to get at what the market and what we want to value then the the conversion feature on the bonds for so i'm going to underline that now we could also kind of do our interest goal seek type of payment we did our our interest for the pure value here we could compare that to imagining you know what would be the interest rate on this bond given the fact that um, if there was no conversion if there is conversion in the price but if we if we assume that it had no conversion and we use the same kind of price what would be the interest rate here we could do we could use our goal seek feature to do this again we've done this calculation a few times in the bonds section so you can go there if you want to practice it i'll do it fairly quickly here so i'm just going to recalculate the same thing but i'm going to use the rate down here so i'm going to be putting in the rate of the 12 percent down here and then i'm going to adjust this using goal seek to figure out what it what it would be to get the end result to what the market price is the 1300 so let's do that same calculation this is going to be the the negative present value shift nine i'm going to pick the rate up here instead of over here going to divide it by two divided by two for semi-annual comma number of periods would be 19 but that would be annual so i got to multiply times two because this is semi-annual twice as many periods comma the payment is going to be the 1000 par value times the 15 percent, but that would be annual this is semi-annual so i got to divide that by two so we should get to the same number here we do now let's do the present value for this 1000 just like we did before negative 
present value shift nine rate is going to then be this 12 percent down here divided by two comma number of periods is going to be the 19 times two comma comma because this is not an annuity but a present value of one so we need just simply the future value that we're going to get at the end of the term that being the 1000 and something wrong something horribly wrong happened so comma comma let's try it again not sure what happened let's just do the whole thing again negative present value shift nine rate 12 percent divided by two comma number of periods is going to be the 19 times two comma comma future value the 1000 and that's it so there we have that let's go ahead and add some pennies to this whole thing number group add a couple pennies let's sum it up equals the sum equals the sum and then underline here font group and underline now i'd like to just change this this rate to the point where where this number results in the market price of the 1300 so i want that to be 1300 i could do that by changing this rate to like 11 percent or something like that and uh or i can use this trusty goal seek so let's go up to the data and we want to go to the what if analysis in the data group data data tab what if analysis group goal seek and we're going to ask excel to do that trial and error for us so excel would you please set that cell to be equal to the price of 1300 by changing this rate cell and then i'm just going to say okay and goal seek does it so we're at the 11.16 so it's just another way that we can kind of look at that and say okay well if there wasn't a conversion feature and i was looking at that price compared to to what we have here then we, we would be thinking of an interest at the 11.16 and whatnot so there's different ways that we can kind of get at this to try to figure out the fact that we have these multiple things going on here and there's not a, a market for these multiple this kind of security that's perfect like that so again we can compare it from different angles we can try to look at the the value of the stock if you exercise the conversion we can look at the value of the bond if there was no conversion feature and whatnot to try to get into what the valuation of it should be